And this update, here is the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center on the Enzo Outlook that came out this morning. You can see the red shaded area. Now we have 100% probability of this strong El Nino continuing through fall and even a likely over a 95% probability that actually continues through the winter months. And even as we transition into the next spring, we have almost an 80% probability that this El Nino continues into spring of 2024. And if we take a look at the tropical front, it's been pretty active. It started off on the slower side, feeling the effects of that El Nino with the stronger wind shear. But overall, I think the higher than average, almost record sea surface temperature anomalies have outweighed. <laughs> so how we stand right now, we've actually had 14 named storms, which is typically average for the entire season, but we still got a long way to go. We still have about two and a half more months of hurricane season. As we stand right now, year to date, in fact, we've hit a record today. This is the 60th day that we've had a named storm out there in the Atlantic. And for September 14th, that is the earliest ever on record. We've had 60 days of a named storm out there in the Atlantic. So it's been very busy. And you can see every single one of them is well above average with typically where we stand, you know, so far sent through September the 13th. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And I would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at the drought map. That also came out today. And you can see in the middle of the country, that's where they desperately need the rain the most. As much as far south as in Texas, most of those areas are in extreme to an exceptional drought, but most of the Southern Plains and the Central Plains and the upper Midwest and all the way up through the North Central states, they're, they need rain badly. And up here in the Pacific Northwest, they're starting to cr cr start to creep in and to drought criteria. The only areas that don't have a drought is literally out west where they had all those rains, higher rains from Hillary. And then of course out east, it's been very active with systems, a system after system, but we are seeing some changes on the horizon. So this week was the first hint of El Nino starting to show up. Remember, El Nino actually started on June the 8th, going into summer. And El Nino really doesn't show up in the summer months. It starts to show up in the fall months, but it definitely makes its appearance in the winter months. So we're actually starting to see the beginning stages of a kind of transition to more of an El Nino type look. So here's the actual jet stream heading in the next week. This is your Southern, southern jet stream getting a little bit more pronounced. You can actually see the separation between the polar jet and the southern subtropical jet. And as this becomes more active, you create more opportunities coming in off the Pacific. You've got these subtle bursts of energy com coming off and these impulses of energy help lift, you know, with these, uh, with the extreme amount of water vapor coming in off, off the Pacific, that creates the op more opportunities for showers and thunderstorms, you know, further south along that subtropical jet. You can actually see out ne next week, likely we have yet another named storm, Nigel, and some indications this could be yet another potential major hurricane out there. So we'll be tracking that one. But look what happens going into the next week. Look at the areas that are desperately needing, a, you know, under a drought have the most enhanced water vapor right so as you get more of a subtropical jet it's you know it's with the southwest flow from the pacific it's pulling in all that water vapor and that's a good sign because this area looks looks uh, wet you know going the next week it's starting to become wet on the wetter side this week it even looks to be a little bit more pronounced as we head into next week and you can see some of the um you know precipitation anomalies over the next 10 days, a compounding effect, kind of the bullseye is really where you need it the most in much of Texas and Oklahoma 
and Kansas and Nebraska into Colorado, up here into the Dakotas. Florida is definitely on the wetter side with the, you know, the areas of low pressure. And of course there was Lee that's making its impacts, getting closer to uh, New England and Maine and going into uh, Nova Scotia. But yes, definitely a good sign. We're starting to see a transition into more of a, an El Nino type look. Now, the last time we had an El Nino, you'd have to go back to 2015, more of a stronger El Nino that we're expecting this year. Before that was 2009. Before that, you'd have to go all the way back to 97, 98. So this was the last one. And the continuation, this is how we actually ended up in the winter months. You have a more active subtropical jet. You have a less active polar jet. So here were the, the precipitation anomalies back then from December through February in 2015. And the polar jet was a little bit less active. So you had that drought continuing with lower than average precipitation on along our northern states. But then the southern jet stream was a lot more pronounced and active. And all these areas across California and Arizona, New Mexico, through Texas and Oklahoma, across the south and into the southeast, heading into Florida, all experienced above average precipitation. And that actually swung up and eventually headed up in parts of the east coast and on the temperature front kind of the same deal right so you had a less active polar jet you had higher than average temperature anomalies up here in the pacific northwest which what you would typically see in an el nino and then you have the southern jet which is more pronounced you got a lot of rainier days a lot of cloudier days it creates even more overrunning type setups so this back in 2015 saw the southern branch much lower and even below average in a good part of the southern plains and across the southeast and especially heading into texas was well below average during your during your winter of 2015. so let's take a look at the setup you know so we've we had that transition we saw the we saw the breakdown of the ridge we finally saw the breakdown of the ridge and i think that is going to say bye bye uh there's probably some a little bit of exceptions the far extreme portions of the desert southwest far extreme portions of the rio grande valley but for the most part i think the ridge is pretty much done especially the hundreds <laughs> for a good part of the country for the rest of the year now it's going to be replaced with more cooler and seasonal like temperatures and the cool down continues so that cool blast drop those temperatures and in fact some of these areas down here in the southern plains are in the 70s for highs today just a week ago they were 107 110 that's a drastic change folks and i think that trend is just kind of can kind of continue because we head towards you know that third week in september we start to see even more signs of the separation start begin to unfold between the polar jet and the southern subtropical jet and we'll have these little low pressures right so we'll have these lows that traverse underneath on the back side so then you create these overrunning conditions you saw the setup what we what we experienced you had the cold air draining in from the north but then on the back side right on the back side you had impulses of energy tra you know trailing into the colder air so that makes a difference obviously once you get in the winter months because that's typically how you would create snowfall in for the deep south. And you probably have more opportunities like that as we get deeper into the winter months. It's one of those years that I think, you know, snow could be as far south as the I-10 corridor this year. No question about it with these type setups that could unfold deeper in the winter months. But we're going to start seeing a lot of transition, right? So, Feb you know, September was warmer and i think it's still going to be pretty much warmer overall for a good part of the country because we are expecting to warm up but you know heading into october we're going to start the beginning signs of that northwest flow getting a lot more evident right so it's going to be a lot more evident from that northwest flow combining with the subtropical jet puts those areas across the middle of the country well below average heading into that first week of october while much of the west actually starts to warm up again and then in the east starts to warm up as well so but as we go into that second week that colder air will start to you know push a little bit further off into the east so by that second week in october 
most of that cold air or the coldest anomalies should be pretty much entrenched across the Great Lakes into the northeast and as far as out into the east and in portions of the Ohio Valley and into the southeast regions. And then as we go into that third week in October, you can definitely see the transition continue. So October definitely appears to be you know, below average, not, not extreme cold or anything like that, but definitely a lot colder than what you've seen in September. As far as averages goes, most of the, you know, a good part of the country is expecting to, you know, get at least average to somewhat below average, especially as we transition deeper into October, because by the time we get to that last week of October, it is definitely a little bit more pronounced with deeper blues starting to show up, even some greens starting to show up. You can see the temperature anomalies. Here's, here's your graph in the bottom, bottom corner of the screen. So what you're looking at, this is a seven day period, right? So when you're seeing greens kind of show up of a 10 degrees below average, that's 10 degrees below average over a seven day time span. So you could have days that are 20 below average, and and lower but overall all over those seven days it's saying hey it's going to be predominantly about 10 degrees below average actually that's definitely on the chilly side when you see something of that anomaly over that long a period of time frame so and i think that's what's going to occur as we get deeper into october so and what's also going to happen here's right now we start to take notice of of back into the pacific so we've had a very active tropical season in the, in the pacific as well we had a couple we had that one recurve and get really close and actually make landfall in california with hillary but most of these storms have continued westbound and i think for the rest of the month typically you know i think for the most part they are gonna start continuing to be on that westward trend but as you can see as we get a little bit deeper into september going towards the end of september especially i think in october we're going to start seeing these pacific storms start to recurve as they get picked up by the more pronounced subtropical jet and when that happens they're going to throw that moisture back into the desert southwest or they're going to throw that moisture back into texas into the southern plains and i think that's going to be a little bit more evidence evident so let's take a look at uh you know the cfs you know 500 millibar and it kind of implies the same thing the europe european guidance is you know following as as more of a pronounced polar jet to the north and a, a little bit more pronounced subtropical jet to the south so by that by this you know the second week in october a little bit more pronounced systems right so you're going to have this kind of conveyor belt of moisture on the southern flank so the i think these all these areas are going to continue to be a little bit more active and then yes even them as we're as we get deeper into that october time frame we're starting to see a little bit more blocking start to occur right we actually start to see you know signs of colder air really starting to show up with with these blocking kind of over the top you get these kind of high latitude blocking type setups allow that colder air to funnel further south and we could be looking at some of our you know freezes you know by by that time frame across across these regions as it definitely appears to be a little bit on the colder side trending that way and let's take a look at some of these uh pressure points so because this is september this is how it looks in september as far as the pressure anomalies and where the higher pressures have been huh, i don't need to tell you it's been across the middle of the country right and i think that actually continues so overall for a good part of september the middle of the country on average overall how it's going to shake out is likely above average with those higher pressures and where the lower pressures have been is like basically where the tropical systems have been out here in the atlantic and closer inland off across the coast and there was idalia that went went through and then came up through off the east coast so these areas across the southeast and across the east coast have obviously been lower lower pressures because of the tropical nature you know getting close to that 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 area but going into october that that's a drastic transition right you we see a, we see definitely the ridge you know convert further north right and the polar jet i mean the, the subtropical jets a lot more pronounced so these these pressure points pretty much take over a good part of the country that typically implies that you have a little bit more instability in the atmosphere 
and you're trending on the overall colder side and more unsettled side as well so if we we take a snapshot of october and that trend i think we start to see these you know these greens starting to show up with these higher than average precipitation anomalies it's trending from mexico and they overrun into going into texas and the overrun going into the southern and central plains and through the ohio valley and eventually heading up to the northeast and that's complements i think these these kind of recurving types of systems that i think is going to be transpiring especially as we get towards that you know october time frame and a lot of these areas we're going to start to see uh you know starting to get about eat away and the and the drought you know i think that's going to be a little bit more evident especially as we go into october and i think it's actually going to be even more pronounced as we get deeper into fall and especially you know as we head into the winter months so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching i do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update fire protect you for and after storm